Ezekiel saw visions of glory. Glory is mentioned 22 times by this man who spoke to a people mired in the grim realities of captivity in Babylon. He is referred to a hundred times as the Son of Man. This was our Lord's most frequent description of himself, associating him with lowly mankind, but also anticipating coming glory. If Isaiah was the poet and Jeremiah the preacher, then Ezekiel was a painter with words. Both a priest and a prophet, his method in chapter one leaves you marveling. But we're greatly encouraged by the welcoming sight that it's a man who's on the throne. Leonard Sheldrake points this out. He writes, the first chapter of Ezekiel has the distinction among prophecies of being a vision of overwhelming disaster and at the same time, visions of God. Beyond and above the throne, which might seem cold and unsympathetic in its greatness and power, was the likeness of the appearance of a man above upon it. Above the throne of sovereign will was a man, a man with a face and hands, a face to look with compassion and mercy, hands to lift from the roadside, hands to feed the hungry, hands to calm and cool a fevered brow, hands to touch the filthy and unclean, to give him a happy home inside the camp, the hands of a man under the wings." End quote. So there is a tenderness behind Ezekiel's stern words, but you have to look for it. Compare him with Jeremiah, who had already prophesied for 35 years, when Ezekiel received his first vision. Jeremiah stayed with the poor in the land after the Babylonians conquered Israel and enforced a massive relocation of the Jews. Jeremiah and Ezekiel felt these tragedies, but look at Ezekiel's austere response. When his wife died, he was told not to weep. How strange alongside Jeremiah's lament. But Ezekiel's detachment did not hinder him. Instead, it let him survey God's wide purposes, a view often missed by those in the midst of the problem. The book of Ezekiel has the most logical design of any of the prophets. It has three sections, each dealing with a different subject. Chapters 1 to 24 address the mystery of the fall of Jerusalem. How will it be destroyed when God lives there? Ezekiel says, God will be moving out. He watches as the Shekinah glory moves first to the Eastern Gate, then to the Mount of Olives, and finally, reluctantly, back to heaven. And the people didn't even notice. Chapters 25 to 39 contain a series of messages to foreign nations, where Ezekiel explains that God is over these oppressive nations too, and will judge them also in his time. Section three, chapters 40 to 48, draw out a plan for rebuilding the temple and laying out the restored state of Israel. Ezekiel is almost as neglected as Leviticus and Chronicles. These books are large. They have some detailed, tedious chapters and require careful attention. Perhaps they're avoided because their chief topic is heaven's perspective, a viewpoint foreign to the natural mind. The lengthy descriptions of the house of God and its service should enthrall the worshiper in the sanctuary, but are strange and forbidding to those who have never entered the holy place by the new and living way. So as you read this book, don't choke on the bones, enjoy what you can and leave the rest to the side for later. And that's our scripture snapshot on the book of Ezekiel.